Well, first of all, I don't think it's a target to Brazil to be the fifth largest economy. That, uh, that will be achieved uh, depending on factors that we need to improve. Uh, it would be n natural to go upscale if you can play well the game and, and improve the economy and the social issues. So Brazil has uh, included uh, between 30 and 40 million people uh, that left the poverty line to the lower middle class. If that continues and there is an inertia favoring that, uh, the Brazilian economy and the Brazilian domestic market will keep improving. Uh, we have today the lowest level of unemployment in the last 30 years, which is 5.8%. Uh, and if you, there are many sectors that are looking for uh, people and they don't find uh, workers. Uh, and, and that is, uh, most of the unemployed people, they are at the age uh, over 40, 45, 50 years old. So young people easily find jobs in Brazil. So this kind of improvement will keep moving. And connectivity is uh, one of the priorities of the private sector and the public sector. Uh, broadband, Brazil, as you know, has today more than 200 million mobile phones. And it is growing very fast. Uh, the use of uh, Blackberries and iPhones in Brazil and that means that the information is all over. We are a full democracy. We have 12 neighbors and no enemies. We have one only language and one only nationality. So the problems of uh, deficit are, are, are not permanent. Uh, we have a trade surplus, uh, consistent uh, trade uh, surplus in the last 10 years and the net external debt of Brazil could be offset with the reserves. So we, we don't have a net external debt at the end. So uh, the fact that we have so many problems to solve, like infrastructure, like education, like uh, the tax burden, like the bureaucracy, like the high interest rates, like corruption. That means that uh, by the time we can fix each of these problems, uh, the competitivity of uh, our society and of our country will keep improving. That is more an opportunity than a, a problem in my point of view. I have two concerns about Brazil. One is as the country is a blessed country, uh, the speed the country is moving is not uh, the ideal. We are not in a hurry. Countries that are under pressure, normally they put more speed to get the things done. So as the country is in a good shape and government improvement is high, uh, welfare is being spreaded, so we should speed up the processes. And the other issue that could affect Brazil more than uh, European crisis directly is the pace of growth of China. As China is uh, the major business partner of Brazil today, uh, we understand that China also depends on, on the consumer markets. So if US and Europe refrain to buy goods from China, there will be an effect on raw materials, there will be an effect on suppliers, and that will mean that uh, Brazil can suffer of a decline of demand. That is more related to 
uh, minerals and some commodities than food. I believe that uh, the demand for food will keep improving because in habits of consumption are changing, more protein is demanded by China, by many other countries, uh, and Brazil is the natural supplier of food uh, in the 21st century, and that will keep moving the economy. And renewable energy in Brazil also is developing new technologies in eolic energy, solar energy, uh, and in this country, these are uh, more opportunities than, uh, than challenges. You know, we, we are a country with a full democracy and a free press. So countries that have free press, you normally read uh, about scandals almost instantaneously. In countries that can control press, you never know what is happening. And in my point of view, corruption in Brazil is not increasing, but is becoming more visible, which is good because the possibility of everybody could be aware of what's going on means that at the end, uh, politics that are being accused and don't have a reasonable explanation uh, will not be reelected. And so my point is that uh, free press in, in Brazil is one of the top positive uh, points. And, and having people uh, uh, pointing what is wrong, it's also good because uh, everybody can be aware and about what needs to be done. Brazil last year was uh, number one in the world in increasing the number of uh, passengers, according to IATA. 19.5% uh, was the increase of the number of passengers. Of course, that uh, create almost a collapse at the airports, because if you increase almost 20% the number of passengers, the infrastructure is not available, but that put pressure in order that we need to improve infrastructure. And so next month there will be an increasing of the, the facilities at the international airport. So when, when you have a free press in order to, to clarify what are the problems, uh, there is a a positive pressure over the, the governance in order to solve the problems and also the awareness of the consumers to help with the solution.